So now it's time to actually start developing our oblique shock relations. So let's write that out. Oblique shock relations. To do that, we're going to draw an oblique shock. So I'm going to try to draw it big because we're going to be using this for a lot, and I need to make sure that you have plenty of room to see everything. First off, we'll just define our angle. This is beta right here. Um, what is beta? It is the angle between my shock wave and the direction my flow is going before the shock. So my flow is going here, and so that is what this line is right there. That is beta. Okay, now this is my flow right here. It's got a velocity one and also Mach number one. However, what I'm going to develop fairly quickly is the idea of a tangential component to this and a normal component. Normal to what? It is normal to my shock wave. So this right here I'm going to call u1 and this one right here is also mn comma 1 as in normal to the shock wave. And I'm also going to have omega 1 which is just my velocity that is tangential to it and my tangential Mach number. We don't deal with the tangential Mach number all that much. We deal with the normal one all the time. Okay, so when that gets to the edge, and I realize I put it too far away, so I'm going to go ahead and select this and move it. Nice. Right there. That looks good. Ha! Movie magic, people. Movie magic. Okay, so when I hit the shock wave, I am deflected. How much am I deflected? I'm not deflected by beta. Don't get confused with that. That's only for the angle that the shock wave makes with my original normal direct or my original direction. Now I'm deflected by an angle theta, and that comes from geometry. Okay, that's always from geometry. I have like a wedge or something. It's deflecting it by half the wedge angle, usually. Or if there's an angle of attack, we'll add that in there. You'll see that a lot. Okay, and once I've done that, I have, once again, a tangential component and a normal component to my velocity. And so with that, I'll have omega 2, and we'll call this m tangential 2. And I'll have u2, as well as m normal 2, that's after the shock wave. And finally, my velocity 2 and my Mach number 2. Perfect. Okay, so this is all the diagram here I'm going to really need for just describing the equations, but if we're going to develop this, we're going to need a control volume. Okay? We're going to need a control volume. And so to make that, I'm going to just draw here to the side what our control volume is going to look like. So my flow goes in here at this direction to begin with, and then is deflected, it moves up. Okay? Flow before, flow after. My control volume, I'm going to try to draw it such that it is parallel here, and it is also parallel here. This way I can begin to define my flow, okay? I'm going to define my flow. I'm going to define it with sides as well. So this side right here is A, B, C, D, E, and F. We're going to use this a lot, so make sure you have this here. Um, but you're not going to need to know this for forever. This is just for us developing the equations today. And I think my handwriting is somewhat legible there, so hopefully that's decently. Oh yeah, and this side right here, that's one. That side right there is two. I was doing it with a bunch of ones and twos, so I think that was pretty clear. Okay. So we're going to go through a very similar process to what we did for normal shocks. We're going to look at each of our continuity equations, and our, you know, our continuity equation, sorry, our momentum equation, and our energy equation, and we're going to say, you know, what falls out of that when we do all those relationships, okay? What falls out of that? So with that, let me push this down, and I think you can finish writing that while I go through these. Let's write on our assumptions. So first off, our assumptions. Same as last time, we're saying it's inviscid. Because it's inviscid, that means we say that our viscosity, not our Mach angle, sorry, we use these symbols over and over again, our viscosity is equal to zero. So we write that down, that is viscosity. There you go. Um, let's see here. We're also going to say that it's steady. So we have no time derivatives. 
We're going to say it's adiabatic. So Q is going to be equal to zero. And we're also going to say that there's no body forces. There are, I mean, gravity is a body force, but its effect on these particles is negligible. If I was talking about like electric fields on a charged particle, that would be much stronger than gravity's effect on that particle. So that's where it would really jump in here. We're not going to have any of those. So no body forces, those are equal to zero. And so with that, I can begin to develop my quantum equations in their simplified form, okay? In their simplified form. I think I'll do this, I'll go over here for this. So first off, let's deal with continuity. So continuity, when we simplify it down, has a really wonderful form. It's a surface integral. Don't worry, we don't have to deal with that too much. It's density times the velocity dot ds. So I'm simply saying how much of this velocity goes you know, straight through that surface. Okay, How much of the velocity is going through that surface? As a note, ds is simply a vector that points perpendicular to that surface. And so we're good to go. Now we can look at this for each side. So if I look at it over here, what I see then, let's go ahead and get a highlighter out here, is that for sides A and sides D, I will have velocity going through them. Okay, I'll have velocity going through them. And if I look at my diagram over here, I realize that that velocity, make sure I do this right, yeah, I'll be equal to my velocity too. That looks good there. Yeah, that looks good. Yes. Yep. Okay. So A and D will have velocity going through them because it's going straight through that surface. However, sides B, let's change this to a different color. B, C, F, and E will have no flow going through them because the flow is parallel to those surfaces. Since it's parallel to the surfaces, it's not going to go through them. And so this actually leads to a very simple equation. I can write it like this. So negative rho one, u one a one, okay? That is on one side, that's side a I just dealt with. It is negative because when I'm drawing my side here, ds is going that way and my flow is going this way. And since they're in opposite directions, when I take a dot product, it becomes negative. And I add to that on the other side, over here, my velocity and my um, normal vector are going in the same direction, so therefore it is um, positive. It's going to be rho 2, u2, a2. There we go. That looks good. I think I did pretty good. And that's all going to be equal to zero. So another thing is, if I make sure that my control volume is drawn correctly, I can say that a1 is equal to a2, and so from that I get that rho1 u1 is equal to rho2 u2. Not too bad, looking pretty good there. I like it a lot. So I think, yes, I think we're doing good there. Did I draw it right? I believe I did. Yep, I did. And just as a note here, why is it u? Why is it u? That is simply because my normal component, I drew these two lines as or parallel to that surface. And so the component, my velocity that's actually going through that is the u component. Whereas we drew it over here, I have one component that is going perpendicular to that surface. So that's the only flow that's actually going through surfaces A and surfaces D. Okay, but that's a good thing to know. I just solved one of my equations. Okay, let's try the next one. We'll go ahead and do conservation of momentum. Okay. So let's write out here. We're going to have to do two of these, which won't be nearly as fun, but that's okay. We can make this work. So. Now we're at momentum, and this is a vector equation, so we're going to have um, a tangential and a normal component to this. 
We're working in normal and tangential components because it's a lot easier to think of normal to the shock wave and tangential to the shock wave. And I, there's a hint, hint here that you know normal to the shock wave should be ringing some bells. That were there's a reason for that. Okay, let's go through it. So first off, let's write our momentum equation with all the assumptions we made earlier. So remember, I'm saying it's inviscid, steady, adiabatic, no body forces. And so from that, we're going to get this equation. So it looked the same way both times, just with slight differences. So first off, it's a surface integral. And I have the whole rho v dot ds again. But what I didn't have um, last time and I have this time is I have another velocity. Those, that's multiplied by a velocity component. And since I'm going to do tangential first, that velocity component is going to be the tangential velocity component, which is w. If you've forgotten that, I'm just going to run back here real quick to the picture. We see that the tangential component is W right there. Okay. And that is going to be equal to negative of another surface integral, which is simply saying what kind of pressure do I have that is causing these changes? ds. And this is the tangential component right here. Tangential. Okay. And let's draw that a little bit nicer. There we go. So I'm going to redraw my, I'm going to just drag it down here. It'll make it easier for me. So I bring this guy over so we can see it as we go. So we're going to need this guy each time. There we are. Oh, I ruined everything. <laughs> I'll just redraw it. So we have our shockwave right here. We have our flow, and we have our control volume, with this being A, B, C, D, E, and F. So we need to evaluate this um, form on every single surface. The first part is really easy. Okay? The first part is incredibly easy. We don't have to worry about it because for si um, sides B, C, D, um, F, and E, just like last time, they will be zero for that first section, for the left half of the equation. All of this is zero on this side. So we're only left with A and D again. So that's really easy. We'll go ahead and write that kind of like last time. So it'll be negative rho one u one a one times the z component, which is w one plus rho two u two a two times w two is equal to, and now we have to deal with this part, which is a little bit harder to think about. Okay, so the easy part is to think about, let's see here, we'll do it again. So F and B. So I'm doing this whole pressure DS, okay? Pressure DS. On sides B and F, it is the same. So, PDS, and I'll just say that B is equal to PDSF. Definitely read that wrong. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Beautiful. And so what that tells me is that they're going to cancel out. And the same thing will happen for C and E. They will cancel each other out. So all we're left with is sides A and D. Okay? A and D. Let's see here. On sides A and D though, my pressure, make sure I do this right so I don't make some horrible mistake here. This is my surface right here. My pressure is the tangential one and DS is perpendicular to that. What is the dot product of a pressure that is um, tangential, or of two vectors that are at a right angle? It's zero. So that's zero too. So all of these sides do nothing for that, and so I'm just left with zero, which I love. I always love when it comes out here. It's great. Um, other things, remember that A1 is equal to A2. We just set that up in how we're writing this out. So those will cancel. And the other thing is I know that rho one u1 is equal to rho two u2, which means I can substitute and that those will cancel as well. 
So all of that comes down to finally say that omega 1 is equal to omega 2, or w, sorry, it's a w, w1 is equal to w2, or that my tangential component velocity does not change, okay? This is very, very important when it comes to learning about oblique shocks. Okay, let's do one more here, and we'll probably I'll probably just give you the equation for um, the energy case. But we're going to finish this out for momentum. So we did a momentum for the tangential component. Now let's do momentum for the normal component. Okay, normal case. The equation is identical, except for I just write normal instead of tangential. <laughs> Yay! It makes it easy. So I'm going to have the whole rho v, that's a vector, ds, that's a vector, and then multiplied by the velocity in this normal direction, which we defined as u. That's going to be equal to the surface integral. And what am I surface integral of? The s there for surface integral. It is of the pressure ds. In this case, it is the normal component. And while before this was zero everywhere, it is no longer zero everywhere. For sides b, c, d, and oops, b, c, f, and e, it's still equal to zero. But for sides a and d, it's simply equal to the pressure times the area because in this case the pressure and the area or the pressure and the surface um, normal are in the same direction so with that I could rewrite it I'm just doing it for sides a and D so once again redrawing this thing like a billion times this is side a this is side D I've got to figure out what it is so I do it for one so it's first row one u1, let's make sure I did this right, yes, a1 times u1, and that is negative because on side a, ds is pointing that direction and my velocity u is pointing that direction, or sorry, it's actually not pointing that direction, yeah, it's normal, it's a normal vector, it'll be pointing out normal to it, there we go, and u is pointing that way, beautiful. On side d, they're both pointing in the same direction, that's u2, that is ds right there, and so it will be positive. So it be rho 2, u2, a2, u2. So that is this component right here. And now I'm going to take care of this one right here. And so that will be equal to negative, because there's a negative sign there if I actually write it out, of negative p1a1 plus P two A two. Okay. Now, before I do any more simplification, remember that A one is equal to A two, just because of how we define this control volume. So all the areas cancel. Okay, makes things simple. And then from that, I can bring all the ones on one side and all the twos on another, and I'll get another equation. So P one plus row one U one squared is equal to P2 plus rho 2 U2 squared. And here is what I'm hoping you realize by this point. All of these equations are identical to our normal shock equations. so long as I'm only talking about the normal component, okay? For the tangential component, we saw that nothing happens. Okay, the only thing that's different is that tangential component. So everything else follows the exact same equation. So if I wanted to, I could write out the entire thing again. I could also get my energy equation, which I'll give you right here just for completeness. But it is gonna be the exact same 
as our normal shock equation. It'll be H1 plus U1 squared over 2 is equal to H2 plus U2 squared over 2. So all of these are identical. And the reason for that makes a lot of sense. We put in normal components because we had normal shocks before. The normal component is still seeing a normal shock. The tangential component isn't seeing a shock at all. And so that's the only thing that's going to change. And we'll develop all of the rest of our equations with that in mind.